Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ask the Professor. School is in session. So looking forward to a great discussion. Uh, get your paper, get your notes, uh, get your mind right, and we'll be right back. Welcome. Thank you for your viewership. Let's go, Gerard. Take off my shirt. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. Keep talking, man. Some of my computer freezing up over here. <laughs> 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 Just like that producer ain't on your shirt no more. What's going on? Hey man, you don't do it like that. Hey, let's just go to the topic. Oh uh, me? Yeah. Well, I, hey, this is Debbie J. <laughs> um, I want to thank the professor for letting me grace his show tonight. I appreciate the invite. Um, we got a great show for you tonight. But first things first, let's get some house work in order um, we like to we would like for you to like share invite subscribe go to our facebook page our instagram page our TikTok page our youtube page our linkedin page hey we everywhere you want to be just like mastercard so <laughs> we need y'all to go share like invite let's make some uh, watch parties get your friends and family together and let's have a great discussion and an adult discussion um, send people to our Facebook page. There will some people that don't have Facebook page. Feel free to go over to our YouTube or our TikTok page or anything like that. But we do want to thank the audience that's always tuning in to the professor's show um, and also always um, supporting the Floor Shores podcast. So, yeah, Flex, let's uh, go ahead and get that intro in. Yep, welcome back, everyone. So the topic of discussion. So we decided. Uh, I felt like it's a need to uh, to do a series on dating. So this series uh, today will be the first of many series, hopefully on dating one on one. So uh, advice for dating success. So from yours truly, Professor. Thank Miss Dad for joining me, and uh, hopefully we can get you all some good advice because there's definitely a need for uh, dating advice out there amongst uh, men and women, and uh, there's several challenges and obstacles. And hopefully we can identify some things that you can expect and things you can do to find that to find that successful or to be successful in your dating pursuits. So uh, I just want to put it out there that we're not professionals. So this is just all advice. And if you need professional help, I would recommend that you seek uh, seek a professional. But trust and believe me, we got you. Hey, I'm a professional. So. You can ask me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when I need professional dating advice, I go to Mr. the producer. No doubt. No, I got you. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, so I'm going to get straight into it. So uh, as far as dating advice and, 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 and some rules, I have, I have a few rules that I think you all should consider when you, uh, when you start dating, uh, while you're dating. So first rule is be yourself. So it sounds very simple, but uh, from my dating experience, a lot of people tend to bring their, uh, their representative. And they're not really who they are and don't really give you a chance to uh, make a decision whether or not this person is a good fit in your life or uh, this is someone you're truly interested in because they're 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 coming to you and they're presenting themselves with this mask and this representative so when i say be yourself it goes a lot deeper so one you have to love yourself and two you have to accept yourself because with being being yourself it comes a certain level of vulnerability and sometimes and more often not we're just not emotionally available or emotionally open to be that vulnerable with someone we would consider a stranger. How you feel about that, Miss Miss Debbie J? Oh, definitely. See, my issue is with the whole dating scene. Like you said, everyone wants to bring their representative um, face first, you know. And when you're starting a talking phase, and you don't really get to meet the real person, so things start getting real. You get comfortable with that person, and that might be a month or two down the line. So definitely be yourself because that's the best representation of yourself. <laughs> um, but to put your best foot forward, you always want to be yourself because it's too many fake people out here. And 
too many people catfishing. Hey, if you out here seriously dating and are looking for an end game, hopefully that's marriage, a happy marriage, then yeah, definitely be yourself. So let me ask y'all both this. What um what do you draw the line or talk about being yourself versus putting your best foot forward? Because I think there is a difference, or maybe y'all don't, but can you can you talk about that, Professor? Yeah, so I think it is a difference. So I think I think your best foot forward could be a facade. It could be a representative. So your best foot is uh, being what you think the other person wants to hear, uh, being the, what you think the other person wants to see, or what the case may be. But being yourself, I think, is just genuinely being who you are, So, which is probably your best foot forward. So we could say being yourself is putting your best foot forward. But if we want to distinguish between the two, then I think putting your best foot forward is, is an act and not necessarily a genuine, uh, genuine to who you really are. Hey, I agree with that because it's almost like a little white lie because, you know, you're going to embellish a little bit because you want people to look. Uh, you want people to think you're doing awesome and you're doing good, especially when you're trying to come out here and try to meet somebody. Definitely. There's the, there's a fine line in between that. Definitely. So if 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 you pick a place to date to take a person on a date on, don't go to a place that if you're trying to impress them on the first date, I go to Papa Do's versus Applebee's. And I know on the regular I can't go to Applebee's. That's not a misrepresentation, though, is it? You can't go to Applebee's on the regular. You go to Pop Dole's on the regular. Pop I know. Yeah. You can't spend that little money. You can't spend that little money on the regular. You like spend that big money on the regular. Hey, not me, man. I eat at home, so. <laughs> but nothing's wrong with that. I mean, if you want to put your um, best foot forward, because you're gonna wear your nicest outfit too, so why not? Yeah. What's the problem with that? Yeah. That's not setting the standard. That's just setting, hey, I want to show you a good time. I want to, hey, look, let me let me show you what I got, a little bit of what I got or what I can do. You want to show, you want to present yourself in a certain kind of way, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it ain't all about the restaurant. I mean, some women may be impressed with uh, material things, fancy places, whatever it's that. But at the end of the day, you still got to have a conversation. You still have to have some kind of connection. And some kind of interaction. And if interaction is there, I mean, it don't matter where you, what restaurant you're at, if you fail to interact, fail to communicate, and just fail to, to create that emotional connection. Yeah, I think you, you're dead on right there. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a fine line. I think sometimes people do go and want to impress their date. But to your point, you know, um, it can become a facade. So, good point. Hey, what about this? How do women and men set themselves apart from others, especially when... There are so many women and men. How do you set yourself apart when you're meeting someone for the first time? That goes along with what we was just talking about, being yourself. You shouldn't have to set yourself apart. Be you, being you and uniquely you set yourself apart. Um, there again, if you're trying to set yourself apart from someone, you're going to start getting into the fine line of lying or trying to embellish yourself and try to be something that you're actually not because you're trying to upstage the next person. No, I'm not trying to upstage you. You're not even my competition. I'm my competition from yesterday. I'm not in competition with no other woman, especially when I'm trying to get the attention of a guy. My me, my personality is who um, I'm trying to compete. In. Well, not necessarily compete against. It's who I'm trying to be because that is one of our biggest problems. We are too fake out here. You and social media help that too. So um, you're trying to act like you got it going on when when people really know you on the uh, on the outside of social media. Like, dude, don't got it like that. Because I know, that, like, seriously, I know this one guy that just used to post on. Facebook, you would think this dude was everywhere. You know, you can go onto Facebook and tag where you are, even though you're not there. Come on, dude. I just saw you riding down the street on Loop 323 in Dallas. How you all the way in Dallas at the Hyatt? Hey, man. Exactly. So we we have, that's the problem. We, we try to fake and be something that we're not. And so trying to set yourself apart from someone, that should be your own personal personality. You yeah, should yeah. not be trying to set yourself apart. Yeah. Professor, we had discussion a little bit earlier too. Same question. How do you set yourself apart? I think for me, there may be a little bit of difference in the answer for men and women. It may not I hope it's not because y'all agreeing too much, man. But um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a different answer for me. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't Here we go. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I totally understand what she's saying, and I truly agree that you should be yourself. But at the same time, there's a there's more single women out there than there are single men. I mean, especially a quality man, uh, quality men versus uh, I guess the level of quality in women. So that's just a lot more women. So men have a lot more options. So I can understand why women would feel that she would want to set herself set, set herself apart. But I would say and it is exactly as simple as Deb said is being yourself. So I think what men want to hear, they want women to be real and they want men to be, they want a woman to be who she is. So don't, I think a real man can see and feel when a woman is not being, when she's being too nice and she's not being herself. And um, a quality man don't want to, don't want to deal with that. He wants to deal with a real woman, a straight up person, a human being. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of women try to play up and be something nice and uh, to be what she thinks he, he wants her to be. And it never, it, it doesn't work. So it may work for a period of time, but it doesn't work with the long term at all. So I would say what sets yourself apart, be yourself, be you, be true to who you are. And that's it. And then to where you are in life as well. OK, I would choose a guy that's established, got a career versus a job or a guy that actually got a home versus an apartment. Not saying I'm knocking that, but that sets him apart what he actually has, where he is in life. So, yes, your position in life can set you apart as well. And besides just personality, if I just would have go down the paper, oh, he got good credit. He don't. He got a job. He don't. He got this. He that. He don't. That can set you apart as well. But like I said, you got to get to know that person first. Hey, yeah. you gonna? Uh, I, you gonna I, I, I ain't tagging onto that stuff because you don't sleep. With, you don't sleep hey. with a credit score. You don't sleep in a, with a car and none of that stuff. You still got to interact with the man. Yeah. So yeah, but that apart. doesn't mean that's setting you apart because okay, you want someone yeah. to just just that's living with their mama, or you want someone that's act on their own. I yeah. want chemistry. Let's be real. I, I want think, chemistry. I, I, I understand, what you're saying, but to your to the professor's point, I do understand that, but I'm not knocking. I don't think you know. I oh, say no, it's, not, it's not an either or, but there to your uh, point, you're gonna end up with Donald Trump because he got a good credit <laughs> score. He got his own. No, house, he don't. But he'll he food and bang fell out bang rub by five times. He eat now. <laughs> hey, it's just a couple of things. Hey, shout out to people um, saying hello to the professor, man. They welcome you back. So. Yes, thank you. That. Good to be back. Yeah. Also, to um, my use uh, followers out there in sipping converse, for whatever reason, it shows you as Facebook users. I'm sorry we can't see your name, but we really appreciate you joining the show. But I want to um, punt to this question right here from our good friend Bernard Perkins. He says one of the problems right. I've had with dating is, is being myself. I'm always me. Sometimes women want you to be more. And um, hmm. do you think there's an unfair expectation with women of men? Yeah, I'll start with you, Professor. I mean, I mean, I don't know what more he's talking about. Do they do they want him to be more of a gentleman? Do they want him to possess more, have more, be more educated? I mean, there's a lot to be considered when with that word more. So I don't know exactly what he means by being what he means by being more. Yeah, so, I think um a good point. Um, I think what happens is a lot of times people try to Follow what and they've alluded to this, what's going on in social media, or movies or whatnot. And I think if you following that or trying to use that as the roadmap to who you should be, you're not being yourself. Would you agree with that? I think women have a measuring stick. So and, and, and if men, if a man ain't beating up to that measuring stick, but I also think a woman would put, position herself to encourage a man. Yeah. So is he trying to encourage him to do more? He, he's comfortable and complacent where he are. He doesn't want to do more. So, I mean, I don't know, but I do think sometimes the measuring stick is unfair. And when we go into any dating situation with a measuring stick, some kind of expectation of who you should be, how you should be, I think that that's faulty. And uh, if the man doesn't measure up from the beginning, then chances are he's not going to measure up any, at, at, at any point in time. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. point right there. We got um, someone follow us on Facebook. She says, I want chemistry and a connection, but it's. I also need to know he has his business handled and in order. So I think he's, she's kind of tying both of y'all's um, response, saying that yeah. hey, the chemistry is important, but she does want to know that his business is in order. And yeah, and that goes as far as um, what we, what I was just talking about, too, setting yourself apart. Yeah, you want someone that can handle their business and know how to pay bills and take care of their household, and that's setting them apart from someone that can't. In a way, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah, I see what she, I, I, I get that. 
I mean, I get it because I mean, if you can't take care of yourself, I mean, I guess it's obvious. How can you take care of someone else? So I, I understand that. But yeah. at the same time, I don't believe in absolutes. But I, maybe he hasn't been put in the position where he had to take care of someone else. So that means he can't grow into uh, being able to provide and take care of someone else. But I get it. Uh, no one's willing to wait. No one wants a project and say, hey, you ain't proving yourself now. So I don't want to you're not going to be my project to see if you prove yourself later as being a provider and be able to take care of you. So I, I understand but- it. As a woman's point of view, with you saying that, as a woman's point of view, I actually have an issue with that only because, so I'm supposed to take off my cape to someone that is not even leveling up to where I am. Like you can't even take care of bills, but I can. And you want me to build you up to where I am? No, baby, go handle yourself, go grow some, go learn something, then come back to me. I should not have to take, Yes, grow. (laughs) Because that has to do with maturity and what you're starting to possess in life. Because the older you get, yes, you want to start possessing stuff. You want to, you should want to leave a legacy. You should want to um, um, have something on later on down the line and everything like that. So, yeah, by all means, don't expect me to take on a project when I'm already at this level. I want someone equal, greater value. That's just me personally. Yeah. I can deal with someone that is not there, but come back to me once once we have distinguished what our issues are or where our differences are. Then come, just come back to me once you if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm, so I mean, that's the thing. I mean, he will have to do it for you. So I mean, it's not him that's requiring him to be at a certain level. It's you. So if he's not at that certain level. Or uh, at that level, then I mean, obviously, you just he just he wasn't fitting your life. Uh, he's not the man yeah. for you. And I think but, it depends on what it is because you said earlier that if he can't take care of himself, he can't take care of someone else. And I don't think it's all about taking care of someone else. I think it's about not being a liability or or another dependent. Like, why am I bringing this person in in my life if I'm going to have to take on all their um, shortcomings and issues? Yeah, I mean, that's not, I mean, that's a possibility too. So I mean, he could be like I said, he could be a liability. It could cost you in the long run, emotionally and financially, taking yeah. on this this project. You know how it may work out, play out for you. Yeah. So um, Perkins, he had a follow up to his um to his question earlier. I'll read this. Oh, Deb, if you don't mind, can you read it? No. I'm. <laughs> hey, Perk. I'm gonna cover myself. <laughs> oh, Perk. <laughs> okay. He says I'm having some playboys. I'm saying some playboys can talk a woman out of anything. I have no game, but I do have conversation. I treat a woman the way they should be treated, and they still end up with the guy that treats them like crap. That's because, Perk, I know you personally, you are one of those good guys. You don't, you're not rough around the edges, and you're one of those nice, gonna treat you like a gentleman. But some women just don't like that. They want that 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 rugged side of a man for some reason. I would not change who you are, Perk, to be with someone. Continue to be that gentleman because they lack in this world. Because once they finish fooling with Mr. Crap, they gonna want to come to you then. But no, then you can actually say, hey, I I don't I don't I shouldn't have to take sloppy seconds. Now Perk, you are a great guy. You really are. Um and a gentleman. Like even when we was actually going out for lunches and stuff, Perk will open up my doors because I, I demand that for men that I go out with. Well I not we didn't go out but out with yeah. but anywho you know what i'm saying because where you got to open up my doors too um okay. you know how we do. <laughs> hey hey hey, but, hey, Perkins. hey Perkins, let me tell you this is coming from the professor you receive this well hopefully <laughs> so what i'm gonna say is uh playboy is a game conversation is a game so women likes to feel like you can talk to them you can get comfortable with them uh you can make them feel comfortable you can put them at ease so there's no magic word it's just about tapping to the emotion and making them feel comfortable, making them feel at ease. So when it comes to being nice, you're probably too nice. So I don't believe in nice. So there's a problem with nice guys <laughs> and why nice guys finish last, finish last. Which, is, which is the honest truth. And nice guys finish last because if you can't stand up to a woman, a woman's not going to feel like you can stand up to anything else. So nice guys usually cater to women and women walk over them per se. And once mm-hmm. women get a hint that there's blood in the water, you have no chance of standing up anything to anyone else, anything else. You have no chance of providing that physical security that she needs. It's yeah. almost impossible. Man, that's good. And it kind of no, goes that's a good with this um, comment right here. Mariposa says, I have two degrees, own two homes, established career, etc. I don't want him to be intimidated by these things, but I have his own 
but have his own goals and aspirations as well. So I think this is me. This is me in text minus the two degrees. I only got one, but on two homes, established career. Listen, boo, I'm, I have actually been told that I'm intimidating because I have, yes, I am a boss in my world by all means, but I want someone to come in that can handle my world and basically put me at ease where I can fall back. I can be a boss out there and be, feminine, uh, be nurturing and everything when I get home. I want that. I, I feel you, but uh, too many men feel like the way you are out there is the way you're going to be at the in the house. No, it's not. And yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. Hey, I like this question right here, and it kind of addresses you know people that can get with a person and they get complacent. So Mariposa says, I need, I need to see the fruit of your labor as well. I'm not a complacent person, so the personality will conflict with mine, and that's okay. Just means we aren't a match. On to the next. So, what do y'all feel about that word complacency? Man, I believe opposites attract. So, and at this day and age, in this generation, I mean, uh, people have had a career. People are retiring are very close to retirement, so they may not feel like going back in the workforce. There could be many scenarios as far as why a person is complacent at this stage in their life. Hey, we get old. So the energy level and all that other stuff is is not there anymore. But I also believe that for every every black, there's a white. You need the opposite. So she may be very busy and 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 business minded and high energy and out there. But you need someone to kind of uh, uh, teach you or show you how to step back and not to be as busy and to enjoy other things in life, other than just being so busy and engaged in everything and trying to do this and try to do that. So that could be a compliment versus someone that's not. Uh, that could be a compliment versus someone that's not compatible with you. Yeah, I think it's um depending on what you're complacent about. I think if we're sitting at home just being lazy, that's one thing. But it's one thing to be in a career field that works for you and, and you're good with it. So I nothing, nothing wrong. Yeah, with I'm gonna take a look at this Clyde before. comment. There's a big difference between nice guys and being a gentleman. Even Playboy is a gentleman, so everyone should be a gentleman. That's point blank period. You don't get anywhere without being a gentleman, but you don't have yeah. to be a nice guy. Okay, so you want to talk about this with class? Well, he, um, Professor basically hit on that a while ago when he was answering Perk's question because he was basically saying nice guys tend to let the women just try to cater to the woman and the woman feel like, okay, I got him wrapped around my finger. I can get whatever I want to. I can walk all over him and treat him any kind of way because he's a nice guy. But that's when the point of the nice guy literally got to put down your foot. Let him know you're still a man because if you let me run over you, anybody can anybody else can come over here and run over you. So, yeah, you have to stand firm in what you believe and then also stand firm in, in how you are trying to run the household based off your uh, demographics with your, your spouse or their kids or whatever like that. So you definitely have to take in consideration of what they have and run your household, but still can be nice and be a gentleman in the, in the same time. But yes, you do have to put your foot down. <laughs> Clyde said you're a playboy, you're a fake. So get on out here with that mess, man. Hey, yeah, playboys, they, they, playboys are what they are. They're playboys. It's known that they're playboys. So women yeah. like honesty and who you are directly. They don't need to lie about it. So if you're a playboy, mm -hmm. ain't nothing fake about being well, a playboy. You're just play. yeah. in yes. a different phase in life. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to the show. Shiku hadn't saw you in a while. Appreciate you tuning in. She says it's funny how we are as women, but we, but we would want a man to sit. Lord, I can't even read. What is that? What it's funny how we are as women, but we would want a man too. So all those things for women, take care of them and their kids, bring them in their homes and pay bills, etc. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, I guess she's saying that women ask for stuff that they ain't always willing to give. So, I, I mean, it happens. It's not a one size fit all monster, but it does. It does happen. Um, where we at, man? We got a few comments coming. I want to make sure we address this before we go to the next um, question. Uh, Mariposa is agreeing with you, Professor. She said, I need to know he can uh, be my shield when I need it or to stand beside me, too. I can't always be the protector and the provider. So she's agreeing with that whole comment about the nice guy. And I know you're not saying that nice guys like some people that are polite and gentlemen, but you're saying those overly passive dudes who sit back yeah. and and um, don't stand up, you know, when it's when it's time to. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So okay. I mean, I mean, he caters to everything that woman wants. He he can't say no. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. I don't like that. I need you to tell me no sometimes because I'm going to push my luck. I'm going to put a hell no on top of that. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> like, but daddy, <laughs> please. No. <laughs> you know, per, per said, one thing a lot of people don't know is that I have three degrees, retired and hold my own financially. I just don't put it out there. So that's, that's it. So we're in a world where people want to know what you got and want to see it up front. They want to know it early if they're meeting you. So where do you draw the line to where you don't seem like you're boasting or attracting someone that wants you only because you got certain things or you may you know have certain accomplishments that you can that you can boast about? See, that's one of those things where, where when do you start having those conversations? When do we start talking about credit and what your credit score is? I feel like once you have spent some time with this person and genuinely are starting to like them. Yeah, by all means. Now we're going somewhere. I actually like you now. So now let's get to the meat and potatoes. Where do you plan on going with this? Or are you plan on just dating me just to date me because you like my company? Or now are we going to start talking about plans for the future? Or are you looking for a wife? Or are you looking for a husband? And then grow off of that. If you say you're looking for a husband and looking for a wife, okay, then the conversation needs to start gradually changing. Okay, well, this is what I'm looking for. These are my expectations. Let's go to expectations first. And then we can go to, well, this is what I have. I have a good credit score. We ain't got to tell the number yet, but I have a good credit score. I own a home or two. I have some degrees. I have some stuff under my belt, some things I have accomplished and some things I'm trying to accomplish. That's when you start building um, that kind of conversation once you found out the expectations. And that's after you find out that you actually like this person. Professor, you ain't Green, coming on the first date talking about, about I got this. these three degrees. <laughs> so first of all, I think great. it's great to have three degrees, but three degrees don't equal money and three degrees at the same time don't equal intellect. So when it comes to dating a woman, um, <laughs> What is what's most important is that emotional connection, that substance. Can you be vulnerable? Can you share yourself? Can you share your experiences? Do you have a depth? Do you understand how your experiences in life uh, translate or correlate to the conversation? So if you can have an in-depth conversation and build some kind of emotional connection and at the same time expose yourself to some level of vulnerability, that will win the day uh, way more than having three degrees, uh, intellect. Uh, or fancy anything. Because at the end of the day, women want emotional security. The only way to get there is you have to share yourself. You have to share your experiences. So, you have to put yourself out there. So let's talk about that, that <laughs> vulnerability, man, because that's something that most men, I shouldn't say most men, that a lot of men um, don't feel comfortable doing. Why is it necessary to be vulnerable? I mean, if you never get you vulnerable, be real. you never get known. So it's like you have to... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are on these degrees. He just basically saying he ain't no dummy. <laughs> Go on with your three degrees, bro. You ain't no dummy. <laughs> but what were you saying, Professor? <laughs> yeah, Why so, need to be vulnerable? I mean, you never, you never get, you never get known. So, and some people, I mean, I get it. That emotional availability. Some people fear. And like I go back to the first statement, you got to love and accept yourself. And when you really love and accept yourself, you don't fear what people would could weaponize against you. Or you don't fear being vulnerability because at the end of the day, loving you, accepting yourself is more than enough. So we have to be able to open up to get known to make those emotional connections. Man, I good. agree. That's heavy. I like that, that was real good. Man, okay. Look at y'all agree. Okay. Hey, here's from Mary Post. Hey, appreciate Mary Post. She's another one out of Constance, man. So she says, I agree, it takes balance. However, if you are satisfied watching her work, her fingers to the bone while you're at home comfortable, dialing for dollars, customer service, and barely making it. I, I So I get what she's saying. If she's out there, if she's driven, and she's trying to grow and progress and remain relevant, it's not saying that somebody complacent is bad, but to her point, she's just not feeling good. She wants somebody that drive, that has equal drive with her. And Deb, you talked about this on the main show. Yes. So important it is for you to be yoked up with someone that has you know drive fire and passion in, about life because i've been there before when you was if you're a hard driven person like i am i have goals i'm still trying to reach i have things that i have already accomplished i'm still trying to accomplish i have a fire and desire for wanting more out of life and if my guy is complacent and just happy working three hours, I mean, three 12-hour shifts for the whole week and done and don't do nothing else with your life, 
That's a problem for me because I'm going to steady be growing, steady trying to acquire things so I can leave the legacy for my child. You're going to there's going to be a level of feeling left behind. Personally, I feel that you're going to be feeling left behind. You're going to feel some kind of resentment or jealousy towards me because I'm steady growing and doing things and you're just still in the same spot you was in 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have to say it has at least a jealousy or envy, but at the same time, you will probably outgrow that person. So when you outgrow that person, I mean, chances are you lose the emotional connection as well. And once that emotional connection is severed because you've just grown so much further away from that person, then you really don't have anything left. Well, the jealousy going to come in because he's going to sit there and say, oh, now you think you better than me. Hell yeah, I am. You still what you were 10 years ago. Don't get mad at me because I grew. <laughs> yeah, I'm better. Like we like supposed to want to be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he probably felt like that when you first started dating. So yeah. it's not new. It just rears his head at, at, at a later point, maybe. Yeah. And hey, Perkins, I didn't call you a degree fool. That wasn't me. <laughs> hey, don't be backtracking now. <laughs> hey, Clyde ain't letting you make it on that Playboy thing, man. Clyde <laughs> said, well, the woman should be and probably are discerning. They aren't stupid for the most part. And they know who is a real gentleman and who is a Playboy. So, Professor, take a moment to elaborate, you know, what you mean between nice guy and Playboy. I mean, a playboy is just a playboy. He's not ready to settle down in his life. Yeah. I think women, women know that. So if the playboy, a real playboy, ain't trying to hide that. So it ain't that he don't offer the woman anything. I mean, she probably enjoys his conversation, uh, enjoy his company, enjoy hanging out. There's probably a lot of things mm -hmm. she enjoy about him. But the one thing she don't offer, he don't offer her is a commitment. The commitment. So is the nice guy is probably the opposite. So he's probably very passive. Uh, yes, you don't have to be a no man. But at the same time, but women know that you are, she is the center of your world. So she can uh, puppet master, be the puppet master and manipulate you the way she wants to manipulate you because you don't have yeah. the uh, wherewithal to stand up for yourself. It doesn't mean you don't ever say no. It don't mean everything you say is yes. And you are a gentleman. But the playboy, because he's living his life, he's a little more exciting and he brings a little more to the table when, hey, those mm -hmm. guys tend to win because they know how to cater to women. So there's a difference mm -hmm. between cater to women as a nice guy and cater to a woman as a man. So playboys right. usually stand up and they're a man's man. And women like that. Okay. So what you're saying, like playboys and, and gentlemen are not the polar opposites. You know, you can be a playboy and playboy a and a gentleman. Every man has to be a gentleman if you want to if you want to have any success with a woman. I guess it depends on the type of woman. Hey, Sheikha offered clarity. She said that's what she was talking about. Appreciate that, Sheikha. Man, Clyde says a nice man isn't necessarily. Uh, yes, man. So he's agreeing with you on there. I'm an extremely nice man plus a gentleman, but I know how to say no. And I think that's essentially what you're saying, Professor. Yeah. So class said women are stupid. Playboy said, I don't think people, I think all people are selfish. So we all have a measuring stick. We all have expectations. It's just, hey, women like honesty too. So Playboy is yeah. upfront about it. And, and that's it. They're just honest about where they are, where they stand. And a man's man would stand up. He, he would say what he say and mean what he say. That's just women attracted to that. I want to hit this other comment from Clyde that says, why not grow in your journey and let your partner grow in his journey? You do not have to run e run in each other's pathway. Just support each other in your own travels. I'm OK with that, but then I'm not OK with my man not growing. Yeah, I'm not OK with that. I'm not OK with someone being complacent and don't want more out of life because it doesn't match who I am. I am steadily and always evolving. Uh, that's just me. I mean, honestly, it, I want to be able to grow with the person that I'm with. And how can I grow? And you're still not growing and you're still where you are 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. No, there has to be some type of growth. Yeah, and I think it depends on what, what you're talking about the growth is, right? And, and to this point, you might be in a career and you don't want to start over and that job is good enough, but that don't mean that um, you don't remain relevant with times is changing, you know? The stock market, you know, is different now than it was before. The way we invest in the stock market, I should say. Um, retirement accounts, Social Security, there's a number of things changing. So to their point, I get what you're saying. You don't want someone that's good now but they're going to be irrelevant and not useful for what the world is becoming so i think there needs to be a level of progression and, and maturing as you're um, going about your business in a relationship 
So. And yes, like she just said, growth doesn't always equal dollars to me. No, no, it does not. And I'm not talking about financial gain at all. I'm talking about you growing as a person and because our desires sh should be changing. A, a baby at five years old is not going to want what a teenager at 13 wants. Your desires yeah. start to change. You want born at five and then here um, at, at 11 and 12, you want the new hottest sensation is that i don't know uh, a rapper or something so what i'm saying is the desires tend to change now mm -hmm. i might have the desire to go travel and i want that person to have that same kind of desire where we're actually growing together we have now actually built this world where we're comfortable and we can go do these things and go explore and go try opening other businesses and doing what our childhood dreams and stuff were mm -hmm. and not just working a job and be happy this is my belief. So, yeah, we can grow with uh, obtaining more material things, worldly possession at the end of the day, at the end of the, uh, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, that is not what impacts or uh, uh, creates divorce or uh, separation in relationship. At the end of the day, we fail to grow with each other. So we are all changing each and every day. Everyone's changing. You're changing. I'm changing, whatever the case may be. But when true growth is continuing to grow and understand who your partner is, yeah. uh, maintaining that, that emotional connection. So more often than not, we get so busy chasing these things or other things that we sever and we lose sight of that need to maintain that emotional connection. So for me, growth in any relationship is growing with your partner and understanding who that person is and how they have changed over the years. Yeah, good point. Okay. Okay, I want to come back to that, Professor. Okay, Yvette Thompson, this is my cousin, y'all. Hey, cuz. I like, um, I like your cousin. You like me? <laughs> hey, just know when the end, she on my side. No, I'm just you need to be more like your cousin. <laughs> hey, Yvette. Okay, yeah, she lady. said. <laughs> she said there is no perfect man or woman. I absolutely agree with the professor. A degree does not mean you know how to love when it's time to love, listen when it's time to listen, and so forth. There is so much more in relationships than money and physical. We get cut out physical things. Who are you without the money or those things? All I heard was I absolutely agree with Professor. I'm pretty sure everything else is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with that. What she's saying too. I, I absolutely agree with it. I have no no fault against what anything she had just said. But like she said, what are you? Uh, what are you without the money or those things? What is, uh, how do you love? Love is the biggest thing. How do you love me? How do you support me? Even though I don't like what you don't like, although you're still going to love me in a sense. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Good deal, man. Yeah, so that's been a lot. So what we're going to do, man, we're going to save some of this for later. Man, it's been a very spirited conversation. We appreciate all the participation from the audience, um, especially to our new um, people, um, viewers out in sip and converse so um what we're gonna do now is move to um Deb. we're gonna let you wrap the show up and give some parting thoughts oh i wasn't ready for my parting thoughts yeah. tonight usually i try to have some high intellect thing to share with y'all um well, but i'm a sh I'm, well i'm gonna just share what i shared on sunday for the people that wasn't on the show on sunday let me tell you Mental health is everything. We have so much going on in the world. Our children have so much going on in the world. Let's make sure that we're taking care of ourselves mentally. If you need to go seek a therapist, go talk to a therapist. Um, you need to go confide in a friend, a real friend that won't tell your business once you fall out. Um, confide in that friend, but make sure you're not holding stuff in and you do try to take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually. And also financially, it also helps, makes life a little easier. Um, but this is Deb, your home girl. You can reach me on um, social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and I do service the Dallas um, DFW area and the East Texas area. So if you're looking for a home or need to sell, let me know. Um, we do have some things coming up. Um, a lot of people are starting to face foreclosures. And I do want you to reach out to me. Let's, let's not make foreclosure your last and only option. Don't ruin your credit and lose your home and have nothing to start over with at least you can sell your home on your own rights and make some money and start a new life for you so give me a call let me see what your uh equity is and hey let's get that put back in your pocket so you can start over so this is your home girl Deb, debbie j i let me 
Okay. Um, tomorrow we got um T Will, Superman T Will show. Um, educate and motivate. So tune in there. We got some great um information with Dev just talking about real estate, credit, um, business startups, things of that nature right there. So tune in tomorrow for T Will show educate and motivate at seven o'clock. Uh, T Will. Yeah. Um, the professor, what you got next? <clears throat> Yeah, I want to say, uh, first I want to say, hey, uh, I see Debbie. I see Deb put a little phone number out there. I got one too. 1-800-PROFESSOR. So, <laughs> 1-800-PROFESSOR, I'm here for you. So, but, uh, but yeah, so thank you, Deb, for joining the show. Really appreciate the interaction. Thank uh, you for having me. Appreciate it. The same. So I appreciate you uh, hosting and, 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 and all that you do. And uh, thank you all the viewers. So thank you for all the comments, uh, all the questions and everything else. We really appreciate it really help facilitate the uh, interaction so what happens next so next week i think we'll be back on for the late night education so me tj and miss zoe uh in the topic of discussion well i guess it's still up in the air but we will get that out to you soon as soon as possible but be back on next tuesday with the love and education i mean the late night education show uh other than that my parting thoughts is love and accept yourself so very simple statement but there's a lot of there's, there's a lot there so when you really love and accept yourself as I said on Sunday, the world is yours. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yes, hey, Perk, come up to D-Town and see me and Flex. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate everybody. Thank you for your viewership. Once again, like, share, follow us on all your um, social media platforms. And again, we are on LinkedIn. Don't leave us out there. Go follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, um, Green with the podcast is where we are. So um, we're on TikTok, the Floor is Yours podcast, LLC um youtube as well so we we are to meet you wherever you need so thank y'all appreciate you hey the next time Bye.